Hey guys, what is up? This is 8-Bit Eric, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a flashback. Back in the day, one of my favorite things to do was rent one of the latest NES games or Super Nintendo games to just have a good weekend playing them. So today I'm going to share some of my favorite games that I used to rent as a kid. Now this isn't all of them, this is just a handful. So let's begin. First on the list, Sonic Spinball. Sonic Spinball presents a different kind of Sonic the Hedgehog game. It throws the blue hero into a fortress modeled after a pinball table. And it tasks you with not clearing the levels quickly platform style, but skillfully navigating massive vertically scrolling stages full of flippers, bumpers, and tubes to find the Chaos Emeralds, who are the power source of Dr. Robotnik's huge pinball stronghold. Acquiring all of them in each stage opens the way to that stage's boss fight, but it's not as simple as achieving a high score or sending Sonic sailing through the proper launch tube. Each gem is hidden or protected in some way, there's several aspects of the control that could have been a bit tighter, and the difficulty may be a bit too extreme for new players, but this is a good option for Sonic fans or pinball fans, or anyone who likes the idea of any game involving balls. <laughs> See what I did there? It's a neat concept because Sonic is a much better fit for a pinball game than any other company's mascot. I mean, could you imagine a Mario pinball game? Go away! Go! Get! 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 Sonic's pinball, in my opinion, way much better. The gameplay here may not be classic, but it remains true to the Sonic franchise. It's definitely worth a look. I used to love running the heck out of this game. Up next, who framed Roger Rabbit? For real, who the... Who the fuck framed him? I, that's what I want to know. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Guys, can we get somebody over here to tell me that? Who framed Roger Rabbit? Who framed Roger Rabbit on the NES is based on the movie of the same name. The premise of this game is that Eddie and Roger are out on adventure all across the city searching for clues. However, after a few minutes of playing this game, you soon realize that this quickly becomes a where the hell do I go type of game. The most frustrating aspect of this game is that every building looks alike including the famous areas of the movie. The Ink and Paint Club, Maroon Cartoons, and the Gag Factory. Gag Factory? Isn't that where Jay's mom works? Oh! The goal is to collect every piece of Acme's will and then defeat Judge Doom, but it's just not that simple, guys. It's often unclear what items should be used for where and what, and the weasels are never far off your tail. But I will say that the weasels are both the best and worst part of the game. You gotta love their jokes. What's black and white and red all over? Hmm. Sunburned penguin. <laughs> I usually just waste my time punching Roger right in the stinking kisser. Who Framed Roger Rabbit could have had a ton of potential as a game, but of course it fell victim to the dreaded LJN curse. However, it's still one of those games that I kept finding myself rent for some reason. Wow, guys, that is stupid. Two of my favorite rentals down, we got two more to go, but in the meantime, how about you go ahead and comment below with some of the games that you used to like to rent. I'm interested, really. I, I really would like to get to know a lot more about you. I mean, just tell me about your life, what color eyes you got, your hair, how you like to kiss, where you're ticklish, your favorite foods. I'm in you. I'm looking at you with my eyes right now and I'm penetrating you. Every single hole in your body is being penetrated by me right now. Up next, Mortal Kombat 3! I was the biggest Mortal Kombat fan I knew back in the day. Legit. All I could think, eat, sleep, and poop about was Mortal Kombat. And when this game came out, I literally ran to the arcade and played my ass off on it. When the Super Nintendo version came out, I immediately bought it and my ass once again played the hell out of it. Mortal Kombat 3 was fast paced 
and introduced a new combo system, which was really fun. The game was more bloody than ever before, had a slew of characters to play as, and the fatalities were just as fun as ever. I never understood the concept of babality, seriously. Hey, what the hell is up with the babalities? What the hell, man? This is bullshit! The graphic, sound, control, and everything about this game definitely makes Mortal Kombat 3 a classic in my book and has provided countless hours of weekend rental fun with me and my friends. Up next, Blast Core. Blast Core is an insane game, the kind that I just loved playing as a kid. This is the perfect weekend game for when you're all alone and you have nothing to do. It puts players behind the controls of current and futuristic destruction machinery with the objective of clearing a path for an out of control nuclear missile carrier. The control is hard at first, but soon you'll be sliding into structures like there's no tomorrow. I like the fact that each vehicle handles slightly differently, which gives the game a lot more depth. The sharp graphics, good sound, and addictive gameplay of Blast Corps make it a sure hit. Blast Core? More like Ass Core! Am I right? And controlling the badass freaking robots a real treat. The shortness of this game and the lack of a true two-player mode are the only things that really keep it from becoming a true N64 classic. However, the shortness is also a blessing because it just makes it a perfect rental game. See what I did there? <laughs>